water. In California, that simple word can conjure up strong emotions. Just bring up words like delta smelt or new dams, and you're sure to get a reaction. And while the reality of increased population and more droughts due to climate change are placing added burdens on California's already stressed water resources, it may also be the right time to forge consensus that addresses the water needs of all Californians. Governor Jerry Brown has initiated the discussion by putting forth the five-year water action plan that identifies key actions to address California's short and long-term water needs. What is being proposed and how do the various stakeholders feel about it? We'll ask John Laird, California Secretary for Natural Resources. Sonny Wright McPeak, former California Secretary of Business, Transportation, and Housing under Governor Schwarzenegger, and current CEO of the California Emerging Technology Fund and president of the Delta Vision Foundation. And Jonas Minton, Water Policy Advisor with the Planning and Conservation League. The State Water Plan, a peace treaty for California's water wars. Additional funding for the Maddie Report made possible by a grant from Paramount Agricultural Companies, growing healthy food for you and your family. From Fresno, the Maddie Report, with Executive Director of the Maddie Institute, Mark Kepler. Welcome. Regardless of your politics, most agree that California is at a critical junction when it comes to water. At Governor Brown's directive, John Laird, Secretary of California Natural Resources Agency, is proposing a five-year state action plan to provide a roadmap to deal with California's water challenges. Welcome to the Maddie Report. Thank you. Well, uh, why, uh, what are the water challenges facing California, I guess, to begin with, and why a five-year plan? Well, basically, uh, we have almost 38 million people in California, and the water system was built piecemeal. The state water project was approved and constructed almost 50 years ago. We're expecting another 10 million people in the next 25 years, and we have a changing climate, which might stress different parts of the system. So we really have to figure out a way to look at everything in our water po portfolio to help for the future. So that kind of gets into what are the risks uh, to California's water resources? So we've got climate mm. uh, change is one. What else? Well, basically the delta of the San Joaquin and Sacramento rivers is the hub of California water. Uh, water for 25 million Californians drains out of the Sierra snowpack through the delta and around, and the delta is crashing. So the real challenge is, is how do you restore the ecosystem of the delta, which helps with water quality and determine a reliable water supply, and how do you put storage and recycling and conservation and regional self-reliance and other issues around it to make the whole thing work. Isn't there another issue on, in terms of water quality? That seems to be an issue here in the Valley. It's an, a, a very important issue uh, because we're having contaminated water supplies in different parts of the state. We have a big discussion of chrome 6 coming up, nitrates are in certain areas, uh, and perchlorate uh, has hurt the southern Santa Clara Valley and the uh, Inland Empire part of California. And if we don't restore that water supply from the contamination, then it stresses the system even more. And if we can recover some of those water supplies, then it's less we have to do in other places. So the three broad <clears throat> objectives are reliability, restoration, and resilience? Exactly. And there's, the three R's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> finally. <laughs> and and the, the thing is, is, you know, California has this real variable climate. We're experiencing it now. Three years ago, we had one of the wettest years on record, and then two dry years, and the first part of this year is dry. Uh, how do we get a reliable water supply with that kind of variability? And if you know that your ecosystem is protected, the quality is good, you have storage to manage in the off years, you lessen the dependence on big projects, you can make it all work. You know, you talk about, there's 10 actions you're calling for. Uh, one of them, it starts off with water conservation, making it a way of life. And the Water Conservation Act requires a 20% uh, per capita reduction in water use by 2020. Uh, are we on pace to hit that target? And if not, how are we going to get there? We're on track to hit that target right now. And that is really, primarily in the urban areas. And so, you know, Los Angeles by itself has grown by four or five million people in the last 25 years on the same amount of water or less. So they become more efficient and that handles their growth. And it's really hard to go to the voters and say, will you spend some billions of dollars for new water if we're not managing our existing water well? 
And there's always places to go in conservation, but it doesn't solve the problem. It then requires an underlying reliable water supply to go with the conservation. We're trying to do them both. But you also talked about um, this issue of regional self-reliance. Uh, the problem in California, right, is the water is in the north and the east, but the use uh, is in the south and the west. Uh, is total self-reliance really possible? I don't think it's total self-reliance, but it's, it's better in reliance. For example, conservation or recycling is something you can do almost everywhere. And so are people doing it? Do they need help? Is the technology not up? Is there not a financial base to do it in some places? And uh, But as I said, when you do the conservation, you need the major thing. And in some places, there's underground places you can store water where there's good aquifers. Other places, they're using them already. In third places, there are none. It, it might be too dry and it just doesn't exist. So it depends on what the characteristics are of the area past common things to all areas that are ways you can get to self -reliance. You know, I found it when I was researching for the show, I found a very interesting st mm -hmm. statistic, and that is that uh, about 25% of, of the needs, water needs for the Southland actually come from rainfall. Um, so they're rely heavily reliant on other sources. It's just kind of interesting. When we come back, we'll talk about the other key aspects of the state water plan, dealing with water quality and water quantity as the state needs it. That conversation in a moment. This is the Matter Report. Welcome back. We're talking to John Laird, Secretary of the California Natural Resources Agency, about the state's new water action plan. Now, you were mentioning the importance of the Sacramento, Sacramento Delta uh, in the state's water supply, and there's something statutorily required when you're dealing with the Delta, and these thing called these co-equal goals of providing a more reliable water supply and protecting the Delta's ecosystem. But some think that that's really mission impossible. Is it? No. <clears throat> and as a matter of fact, uh, it has the potential for helping us through a political thicket that has stumped people for ages. And when the uh, water project was built, none of the modern environmental laws were in place. There was no CEQA, no endangered species, some of the others, and as a result, it's been in court for the last 40 years. <clears throat> and what this really does is says, we build the conservation measures into the project, so we know uh, what is allowable at certain times and try to make it reliable. And we believe there's enough water to do them both, but that's the challenge. People are arguing and some of them are still 500,000 or a million acre feet apart. <laughs> yeah, well the governor's <clears throat> talking about this Bay Delta Conservation Plan, and that's the, the kind of the two pumps for lack of a better way to say it, uh, two pump plan. Uh, I'm just curious, the two pumps are talking about 9,000 uh, uh, cubic feet of uh, water a second, what is currently being pumped? Uh, would that change the, the Well, that's an interesting number? thing because there's actually a bunch of different numbers and there's a question of how they fit together. And you see the, the pumps at the bottom of the delta that put water into the aqueduct were designed to pull water out of the delta at 15,000 cubic feet per second. That doesn't work because you reverse flows and streams, you pull salt water in from the bay, San Francisco Bay. So it was, it was supposed and so to be... It went, it's as a capacity of 15,000, right. but it goes down to six or eight or nine. But this is just the capacity of what water could move around the delta, and you wouldn't necessarily take capacity if there weren't high flows or didn't fit the permit. But you'd have both. You'd have the, the north pumps and the south pumps. Um, you'd have intakes at the north and then the pumps at the south. And, and the amount going out of the delta would be approximately the same? Uh, approximately the same, although the real thing we're, we're trying to do is build in conservation measures, and if you're really successful, maybe you could take some more. If you're really unsuccessful over time, you probably have to take a little less, and we're trying to tie the two together. Expensive project. So the question Very is, expensive. what does what it <clears throat> cost, uh, and who's going to pay for it? it? It costs about, overall, including operations in the habitat restoration, it costs about $25 billion. Uh, roughly 14 or 15 are for the actual construction of the project. The users uh, are who pay for the project. The state 
a budget and the state voters we hope will pay for the habitat restoration which is smaller it's in the neighborhood of four billion or less and the the real issue is is that you see in the valley farmers think about what it is to them or the cost to them if you're in urban southern california and you're in an average retail district that gets its water from the metropolitan water district it probably means three to four dollars a month more on your bill uh, moving up to that over a 10-year period. So the thing about it is, if you have 25 million people that get their water from the Delta, you can spread those costs to the 25 million over 50 years. So there's, it is not as daunting as it might sound. Um, you know, the other issue is is water storage. That That's a huge issue. Um, and that's either above ground dams, um, and people use that word <coughs> different ways, um, and also uh, below ground with uh, water banking. Uh, is storage ne more storage necessary, number one? How much is it going to cost and who's going to pay for that? I think it's very necessary because it helps us even out things. If you have a wet year like three years ago, we could have had hundreds of thousands of additional acre feet that flowed to the sea after we exported to people that needed water and after we provided all the water for the habitat. Uh, uh, more than that went because the flows were high and it was a wet year. If we could put that into storage, you could even out these dry years. It gets you to the reliability that we're talking about in terms of a system. And the storage, um, the who pays is always part of the debate. Uh, the only dam the state has ever built, the Oroville Dam as part of the state water project, uh, was paid for 97 percent by people that benefited from it and used the water when they used it. Uh, the proposals now peg it more at 50-50 because a lot of it would be used for fish or habitat that is considered a statewide need. But that is the debate that's going on with storage is, is who pays and how much and whether it's a few big projects or a big project and many smaller ones across the state. We've got a lot to talk about. But <clears throat> we've only got about a minute left, even less actually, in this segment. But I wanted to ask you two quick questions. One is, uh, what about the levees? Are they in as bad a shape as people say? And then two, what about the ongoing maintenance? Not just building you know, the new dams or fixing the levees, but the ongoing maintenance. Who's going to pay for that? The levees is a tough question because many of them are constructed privately. They're constructed to keep river water back, not for seismic safety. And they need to be of a better quality. And the state will pay for some, and the voters have approved it. But that's a debate that we're having right now. Well, I want to thank Secretary uh, John Laird from the California Natural Resources Agency. Up next, two different v viewpoints on the governor's new water plan. That conversation in a moment. This is the Maddie Report. Welcome back. As the famous quote goes, in California, whiskey is for drinking and water is for fighting over. We don't expect a fight to break out here, but we do expect to hear some informed uh, viewpoints from our two guests. They are Sonny Wright McPeak, the former California Secretary of Business, Transportation, Housing under Governor Schwarzenegger and current president of the Delta Vision Foundation, and Jonas Minton, a senior water policy advisor with the Planning and Conservation League. Welcome to the Matty Report. Thank you. Well, Sonny, let's start with you. We were talking to Secretary Laird about conservation that's a, as a key component of the new state water plan. Is that going to close the gap um, in, uh, in water needs for California? Is that going to do it alone or is it going to be part of a portfolio? How do you see conservation? It is part of the answer. It won't do it alone, but it is the bedrock. We start with don't waste any water. No, in fact, we, I often say it is a, a sin to waste water or a crime to waste money. So you want to start with saving every last drop of water and using it most efficiently. But we have variations in rainfall, and we need to be able to have other components of the solution, storage and conveyance that couples with conservation in order to get um, through these periods of low rainfall and also to meet the state's demands. Conservation League, I'm assuming you like the idea of focusing on conservation. We do. Uh, the full state water plan identifies enough water conservation savings just in our cities to serve about 10 million people. As Sunny pointed out, there are other elements that have to be there. Water recycling. We use water once and throw it away. Um, 
there's enough potential there to serve another six million Californians. And that's for watering lawns and parks and things of that and nature? And in some places, it's for recharging our groundwater supplies after the water has been purified to standards equivalent to what you would find on the International Space Station. Okay. And or, you know, Orange County is, is like the prime example of reusing their water many, many times in municipal uses before it's finally discharged. Well, they really have to because they're not getting more water supplies right. and, and, it's, and they don't have a lot of water there, a lot of rainfall. Um, Jonas, let me ask you about this whole issue of regional self-reliance. Uh, it seems like all the waters in the north and eastern part of the state, all the needs are in the south and western part of the state. So isn't this really saying to folks in the south and western uh, regions, it's really on you? No. Uh, we are one state. Um, we are interconnected hydraulically, meaning the water from as far north as the Oregon border uh, contributes to our most important uh, aquatic ecosystem, the Delta, and much of that water serves other areas. So it's incumbent upon people in Northern California as well to conserve. Here in Sacramento, uh, the water district has actually put a water meter, heaven forbid, on our home. And that is not only a good idea, it's now the law. What do you think about this issue of self-reliance? We want every region to do what they can to be as efficient in their water use and also within a region to cooperate. So there are lots of water agencies or water districts within a water basin or within a region that could do a better job of helping each other. But as Jonas said, all you have to do is look at a map of California and see the water flow uh, and see the sources for every region and understand we actually are one state, we're interconnected by water, and we need to realize we have re responsibilities to other regions. Let me talk about the elephant in the room, kind of the, the delta, um, and the governor's uh, Bay Delta Conservation Plan. It's supposed to try to achieve the co-equal goals of uh, providing reliable source of water and also protecting the delta. Um, what are your thoughts on the governor's plan? The Delta Vision Foundation is really clear about uh, the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, that it is only one element of what is needed. And unfortunately, we've spent too much time focusing only on that element. And while it's Bay Delta Conservation Plan, the centerpiece of it is uh, isolated conveyance, uh, now the two twin tunnels. Fortunately, the administration has been listening to many of us. <laughs> there is a chorus. Uh, throughout California saying you have to have a comprehensive integrated plan and that is what they now have put forward. The real test will be are they prepared to implement the other components of that plan on a comparable timetable and in parallel to moving forward on BDCP. What do you think of the Bay Delta Conservation Plan? One of the biggest problems they have is how much it costs. It's currently estimated with interest to be about $50 billion. Now, I had seen $14 billion for the tunnels and $25 billion for the total project. Why, why, why are you saying different numbers? Just like when you buy a house, your house payment is not just the principal, it's the interest as well. So when you figure out how much it's really going to cost both ratepayers and taxpayers, you're up to $50 billion. So the car you, you buy says you know, $25,000, but after you pay all the interest and whatnot, it's a little higher. Exactly. And... Uh, <laughs> Why that's so problematic is that the other good programs that are necessary, the conservation, the water recycling, improving our storage, competes for those funds. These tunnels do not produce any more water. Um, so how are we going to do all these things at once? And the plan, unfortunately, does not address where is the money coming from. Okay, well, when we come back, we're going to talk about dams. That could be a good word or a curse word, depending who you're talking to. A conversation about dams and other things water. When we return, this is the Maddie Report. Welcome back. We're talking about the governor's uh, water action plan with Sonny Wright McPeak, the former California Secretary of BTH and currently with the Delta Vision Foundation, and Jonas Minton with the Planning and Conservation League. So Jonas, I want to talk about wa water storage for a moment, particularly the issue of new dams. Um, always seems to get a reaction of folks. Uh, so what are your thoughts on, on more storage? Uh, above ground, uh, dams, below ground, water banking, both? Well, in California, people don't always realize we already have 1,400 dams uh, plus storage, as you mentioned, underground in our vast aquifers. So it isn't as though we don't do that and we won't do more of it. 
uh, folks moved ahead recently with new projects in both Northern California and Southern California, expanding reservoirs, building new dams. So that's not off the table. It depends on where we're looking. Now, is, is it are smaller capacity dams more important to you than, than larger capacity dams? It varies. Uh, there are some places where we would be looking at massive uh, new dams if it fits into the environment and this coordinated system. A part of that coordinated system includes a delta. And we must remember that our delta, it's an estuary. That's where fresh water from rivers mixes with ocean water. and the problem is that we've taken so much water out of that estuary that the species are on the brink of extinction. And so what are we going to do? The overwhelming scientific consensus is that the estuary, at least in some times, needs more water. Could, could dams supply that water? Uh, potentially. That's one of the important details along with cost and who pays for it. The problem right now is that the administration, in our view, is proposing massive new tunnels, bigger than the channel going from England to France, uh, that would actually divert more water from around the delta. And that balance has not uh, uh, made sense to most of the science, uh, to si independent scientists who've looked at it. Well, my understanding is about 9,000 cubic feet per second of water uh, with these new tunnels, but on the tunnels in the south that exist already, it's 15,000. So how is that more? Uh, it's where you take it from. Right now that water flows through the delta where it does provide some environmental benefits. It keeps water fresher. These species have evolved over 6,000 years and they're kind of used to where the water mixes, the fresh water and the salt water. When you remove so much of the fresh water from that mixing zone, mm -hmm. uh, the concern by the fisheries scientists is that it could quite possibly further endanger those species. What, what, what about dams, Sonny? Um, do we need dams to help the, the delta? So when you, when you use the word dam, uh, it, it, most people... Dams plural. <laughs> dams plural. Uh, people envision that you've blocked flows in a river. So I, okay. I would set that aside. There is a, a when you do a, an off-stream reservoir, there is a structure that will be called the dam that is part of it. But the, the point that really is under, needs to be underscored is, yes, we need additional storage in the right place. What we have to do is get more water to the fish in the estuary at the right time and the right temperature. So no matter how much of the science you look at, what we do know is that fish respond to water. It's the most important part of fish habitat is actually water. In order to be able to take advantage of very high runoffs that we have during wet years, there will be... 43 million acre feet that goes out the Golden Gate. In a dry year, we get something around uh, 6 to 12. And ironically, we don't have the facilities to take water when it's really surplus or really abundant, store it, convey it, and get it back into the ground in the San Joaquin Valley. As a result, today, more water gets taken out of the delta to export south of the delta in a dry year than in a wet year. So you see there's a possible solution to the Delta Oh, problem. there is totally a possible solution. It goes back to saying it's integrated. Use water efficiently, conserve, but use all these other things such as recycling and water markets. You know, I do see this theme here with efficiency. It kind of ties into the governor's uh, approach to government, it seems. Well, he should have listened 30 years ago. But, uh, <laughs> we're, yes, we're not going to talk about right, that. Right. There <laughs> is a whole notion about, yes, the water ethic. Do um, not waste water. You know, this also ties into safe drinking water in the valley, sure. um, you know, where the groundwater is, is uh, contaminated by nitrates. Um, do you think the state water plan does enough to deal with uh, safe drinking water? No. No, it does not because it does not. Uh, there is a need for, in smaller, particularly farming communities who don't have the wherewithal to actually clean up their groundwater, to assist them, to actually uh, uh, very proactively go, get into partnerships with them. That's the kind of thing that out of a water bond, when you look at water use efficiency being uh, a foundation, a cornerstone of that, you'd want to look at how to optimize that. In Southern California, although those are urban areas, there are huge groundwater aquifers that are contaminated that also need to be cleaned up. You know, we've only got a minute left uh, in the show, and I wanted to ask you two quick questions. One is on, on flooding in the levees. Um, how important is it to fix the delta levees, Jonas? Even if these giant tunnels are built, more than half of the water will still have to pass by those, those levees. We've identified, working with Sunny and others, uh, about a billion dollars of projects where there is money to strengthen those levees, making them earthquake resilient. 
Last question is I wanted to ask you about maintenance. It's not just building the facilities, it's maintaining them. Is there going to be enough money to maintain these facilities once they're built? Uh, there isn't a plan yet to have sufficient funds to maintain them. That's one of those additional pieces of implementation that has to be worked out uh, with the administration and the legislature. Okay, well I want to thank Sonny Wright McPeak, the former secretary of BTH and current president of the Delta Vision Foundation, and Jonas Minton with the Planning and Conservation League, as well as Secretary John Laird for joining us. If you'd like to stay current in Valley politics and policy, you can sign up for our free award-winning newsletter of the Maddie Daily by logging onto our website at maddieinstitute.org. And now, another perspective. My name is Sarge Green, and I am a water scientist with the California Water Institute at Fresno State. California water leaders recently announced a state water action plan. What is it, and what does it do? We are operating on a 20th century water management system with 21st century demands that cannot all be met. The largest challenge for the system is the lack of the ability to link and operate the many different parts together to meet the new complex demands. A state water action plan is an effort to map the full scope of the future actions needed to manage water for all uses efficiently. Some are short-term actions, others are more long-term. California's water users will be asked to finance some of the long-term investments sooner rather than later, and the action plan gives them the big picture so they understand why those investments are needed. We have postponed many investments for too long. Some of our systems are on the verge of failure. Pipes, dams, levees, and the natural water environment are all begging for attention at the same time. Compared to other necessities, water is still relatively inexpensive, but it will get more costly. A state water action plan implemented successfully can help us manage those future costs by making the right investments at the right time. This is Sarge Green for the Matter Report. The views expressed in the Matter Report are those of the individuals participating in the program and do not necessarily reflect those of the Maddie Institute, the California Channel, Casey, or Valley PBS. If you'd like to share your thoughts about the points and opinions shared in the Matter Report, visit our website at valleypbs.org/matty. This is Mark Kepler for the Matter Report. Thanks for joining us.